This is my lip without a mustache. So there's the first lesson. It's December, so there are no more mustaches. Um, I guess it's a less beautiful place than it was in November. So uh, today our lesson is on fractional exponents and radicals. And so fractional fractions and exponents um, we're going to be dealing with instead of x squared, it might be x to the power of a half. There's going to be a fraction up in that exponent. And radicals is a fancy word for roots, square roots, cube roots, things like that. And the learning intentions for today's lessons, or what you should be able to do by the end, are first to express fractional exponents as radicals. So you can switch them from one form to the other. Um, and we're going to be doing this in both directions. So you'll be able to go from radicals to exponents and exponents back to radicals. And the second thing is we're going to be using these techniques uh, what we learned here in order to evaluate them. So we're going to take a fractional exponent, maybe 2 to the power of 2 thirds. Very hard to do, uh, at least to wrap your head around it. But if you put it into a radical and break into its pieces, that's something we can now work with. So that's what we'll be doing in part two. Okay, so our first learning intention dealt with going from one form to another. So we're going to be changing forms, either using roots into exponents or backwards exponents into roots. And I'm going to give you three ways to do this. I'm not concerned with which one you use. You just have to make sure that you remember one of them. So we have three ways. First, there's a tree, and trees have roots. Okay? The roots go in the ground. They're on the bottom of a tree. We have boots and hats. Okay? Boots, and you're wearing a hat. Or we have the number in denominator goes in de notch. So these are three ways, um, I guess... Uh, I've seen from different teachers. So this is one that I've always used. This is one that uh, Mr. Bennett, who's a vice principal at Central Elementary, he's a teacher for Bose Math. I learned this method from him. And this is uh, from a teacher named Mrs. Malcolm who was here for a while and then moved back to Saskatchewan. So first, trees have roots. So if I had a number like this, x to the power of 3 halves, well, the roots are on the bottom of a tree. So the bottom is the 2, so the 2 is the part that's the root. And this is a root sign, so this is a 2 or a square root of x cubed. Okay. Um, boots and hats. Let's say this is you. Here you are. You are x to the power of 4 thirds. When you get 2, your house, you come in the door, you leave your boots, the boots are on the bottom, okay? Boots on the bottom, hats on top. You leave your boots at the door, and your hat goes up on the rack, or these can also be written with the hat up top. Or on this one, the hat could have been up top. And I didn't have to show the square root because a root is a square root always if it doesn't say otherwise. Cube root, square root. This is also square root, but we don't need that two there. And last one, the number in denominator goes in the notch. So let's say this is our fractional exponent. We're turning it into a root. So the number in denominator, denominator is the bottom goes in the notch. So think of the number in the denominator goes in the notch part of your root. And the five, or the top part, goes where the only leftover part is. And this is the exact same as putting it up here. So you'll see them both ways. Um, they're just used interchangeably. Don't worry if that number is up inside the root or if it's up on top. Sometimes they'll put a bracket around it to show it like that. Same thing, that 5 is on the root or inside, or when you go back to a exponent form, it goes into the top. Okay, so let's take a look at one more of each of those. We'll just look at an example. So, for the first one, trees have roots. Maybe we'll look at this backwards this time. I will give you this one. 5x squared. Write that in its exponent form. So trees have roots. So the root part 
is the bottom because a root of a tree goes in the ground, it's on the bottom. So when I set up my fractional exponent, this is my root type, it goes in the bottom. And the one left over goes on top. Let's look at boots and hats again. Um, let's try this one. The seventh root of p to the power of four. Or, remember that four could be out here, doesn't matter. When we write this into its exponent form, when you come into your house, you leave the boots at the door, boots are on the bottom, they go on your feet, and the hat goes up on the rack, the hat is on top of your head, so it's the higher one. Or the last one, let's try this one, we'll say a cube root of n to the power of 5. Well, the number in the notch, the notch, is the denominator. The denominator is the bottom of a fraction, so it's a cube root, and there we are. So, again, you can pick any method you like, come up with your own. How about you just take this and memorize it? That's another way to do it. Um, or use one of these little tricks for remembering. Any one you use, I'm happy with, as long as you can go from one form to the other. The second part of today's lesson is using the second unit, uh, the second learning intention, which is changing um, or evaluating fractional exponents. This may look very difficult, but it's really not that bad if you saw it in its root form. I think most of you could do that. So our steps, whenever you're asked to evaluate, first of all, what does evaluate mean? Evaluate means get a final number answer for it. So we're looking for an answer like 5, or 3, or 100, or negative 10. It will be a number answer, no exponent bits left over, no letters involved. Evaluate just means final number answer. So steps, when you see evaluating a fractional exponent, write it in its root form. Then you will simplify the root, because if you root first, you get smaller numbers that will be easier to power after. If you could do it power first, root later, but you're gonna deal with much bigger numbers that way. It's easier if we root first, power second. So first, to evaluate 36 to the power of 1 half, I'm going to turn this into using my boots and hats, and maybe I'll leave this up here. Um, so that you can refer to it. So if I was going to change 36 to 1 half, seeing where my n's and m's are, I can move them all around using my boots and hats, I can get this one to be the square root of 36. There's a 2 there, but for square root we don't show that. And there's a power of 1 here, but power of 1's we don't show those. Square root of 36, you're supposed to know your square roots, you're supposed to know your cube roots up to a certain number. Um, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, I think that should be good. Um, maybe 6 times 6 times 6 is 216, but after that, you're good. So for square roots, square root of 36 is 6. 27 to the 1 third, it's a fractional exponent, so I'm going to use my boots and hats. The boot is left at the door, so I have a cube root of 27 to the power of 1. Now, what I said first was simplify the roots first. Well, 27 to the 1 would still be 27, but let's think of roots first. The cube root of 27. You should know your cube roots. We're looking for, again, our cube roots would be 1, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, uh, then we have 125, 216. So those numbers are numbers that work in our cube roots. So the cube root of 27 is 3. Next one, a little trickier one. 27 to the power of 2 thirds. Using your boots and your hats or your tree, we get the cube root of 27 squared. So if I was to deal with my square roots first, this would be really hard to do in your head, and the point of this is to be able to do it in your head. Um, there is a non-calculator part of your exam that you will need to be prepared for. So 27 squared, that's a big number. And then to cube root it, even more difficult. So do the roots first. Cube root of 27 is 3, and we still have that squared hanging around. 3 squared is 9. 
So 27 to the power of 2 thirds is 9. So you take out 27, cube rooted is 3, 3 squared is 9. And let's look at uh, another one here. 27 over 8 to the 2 thirds. When you see a fraction with an exponent outside of it, with the brackets, this needs to affect both parts. So I will do my boots and hats to the 27 and then the 8. So I get the cube root of 27 squared over the cube root of 8 squared. So I've cube rooted both, I've squared both, and now to do the work, do the roots first. 27 cube rooted is 3 squared, and then 8 cube root of 8, see 8 is one of our cube roots, is 2 squared. So my final answer is 9 over 4. So to practice this for today's lesson, um, the assignment I've selected for you, it will also be in the description of the YouTube video, is page 227, question 3, 5 to 8, 10 to 12, and 16, and I want you to do just A, C, and E for each of them. Okay, um, 16 is going to give you decimals instead of fractions. Change your decimal into a fraction, then do your boots and hats, and then solve. Okay, good luck.